Good morning, friends. It's so nice to be back today. I'm Anitra with Simply Living Smart, and I'm so excited to have you with me. I hope you've had a great week. This has been um, just a fun um, thing to plan. I'm so excited to share some information with you today. And before we jump in, I just wanted to thank those of you who reached out this week. There have been a lot of you. And um, it seems to me like this is going really far and that a lot of people are sharing these videos. I also had some questions about how do you access the recorded videos we've done in the past. And just for those of you who are new to Simply Living Smart, you'll find if you go to my page, my Facebook page at Simply Living Smart, that um, I have all of those archived. So you can either look under the live tab, under the videos tab, and you can see everything that's been recorded. I believe that it goes back probably six weeks and I do this every Saturday at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. So if you'd like to, you can join me live. These go for about 30 to 40 minutes or you can watch the recorded version. But my intention is always to bring you information that I feel is helpful for most people when we're talking about things like health, organization, efficiency, um, just some smart things that we can do to make our life more joyful and that we can share this information that we learn with others. That's always my intention. Always know that there, most of the classes that I teach have free downloads or recipes attached, and they will be in the show notes. So if you go back and look at those videos, you'll find that you can download those things and also go ahead and share those with those that you love. Um, if you want to go and leave a kind review, that's always great. I profit nothing from this. I wanna make sure that everyone gets information and there will be things once in a while, um, like today, that I offer products in my online cart, but that's certainly not um, you know, the, the, the sole intent. It's simply to help you with the tools that you need to be successful. So today, I'd like to just introduce what we're gonna be doing in July. I've had a lot of people reach out again and ask if I would do a series on home organization. And because I have a lot of experience in the space and have worked with a lot of clients over the years, I've got some great things that I'd love to share with you. In fact, what I'd love to do is to break down every single week in July to focus on one aspect of organization, where I'll take you through every room in your home, even your car, even your garage, and your pantry, and teach you some tips and tricks that you may that may be new to you and that you may want to implement in your home organization projects. And summertime is a great time to do that in between vacations. So you can be looking forward to that. I will also have a free download of all of this organization material. Um, you know, I've written and published two books on organization, and so I know a little thing or two, and I love to share it more than anything. It's one of the things I'm most passionate about is organizing spaces and places so that you can have a more um, in control life. So hopefully you can join me for those. Again, they'll be recorded. Today we're gonna to dive into how to become a food waste warrior. And this has really been, um, this is something I've struggled with, so I'm just gonna to be totally honest and tell you that I am not the best food waste warrior, but I wanna become it because I understand the um, implications that it has not only to our health, but also to our planet and to just being um, a good citizen. And so we're gonna talk about that. So, when you think about um, how you can be kinder to your planet, what are the things maybe that you think about? You might think about you know, driving electric cars or getting solar energy or maybe even conserving your water. But something that we may not think about really often is how to become a food waste warrior and, and stop wasting food. That's a biggie. It's interesting to understand that 40% of the food that is actually produced never gets used. And I think this is a shocking number, 40%, when you think of all the people in the world who could use that food. And it's all in the supply chain. It's from the farms to the table, right? Somehow in there, things get wasted. So we're gonna talk about that today and what we can do to combat waste in simple, simple habits every day. I recently watched a documentary where they were showing these farmers and they were you know, dumping all their fruit and all their vegetables on these big conveyor belts. And they had this host of people hand picking those fruits and vegetables that weren't absolutely perfect. I mean, they had a tiny little, you know, um, tiny little blemish or maybe they were, you know, they, they kind of bubbled out strange, but they didn't look like the 
perfect symmetrical fruit or vegetable. So what they would do is they would toss those. By the tons, they were tossed in these big garbage bins. And then what happened? They, they weren't distributed to farmer's markets and they weren't distributed to the poor or the food banks because the food bank banks had no way to facilitate that much food. They just would throw it back in the field to rot. And, to, and it just broke my heart because I thought to myself, oh, look at all the things I could make with that fruit that's being discarded that's perfectly good. It just doesn't pass the perfect standard. I imagine what it would be like if we were groceries, or we were produce, and someone said, Anitra, you have one too many wrinkles, I'm getting rid of you, right? And it also makes me think we should garden more because as we, I am to blame, I am not a gardener. I happen to be really lucky and live next to someone who's a master gardener, but I love it when I see, you know, things that are maybe imperfect or um, I just think that's nature's way of being humorous and they're just as delicious and there's nothing like biting into a fresh tomato from the garden instead of one that's been picked six weeks before it's ripe and it doesn't taste like anything, maybe plastic, right? So there's so much value and I think as, as time goes on, more of us are going to join community gardens or learn to garden ourselves, not only because it's healthier and we avoid all the pesticides, but because we can control the amount of food that we consume. And clearly we have neighbors that we can share it with. So I think that's a win-win. All right. You know, another thing that we have to recognize is not only is food wasted, but when restaurants throw away their food at the end of the day, how do they do that? Well, they put it in these big plastic bags, which actually um, produce methane when they decompose. And methane is even more dangerous than carbon dioxide. Isn't that interesting? So the truth of all the greenhouse gases is that 10% of that comes from methane gas and that's from waste, that's from plastic. And I also read some research that said it actually takes 500 years for plastic to disintegrate. So unless we're recycling it, you know, you can take your grocery bags and throw it in with your, with your regular trash and it will never get recycled. It'll sit in a waste dump or a landfill and it'll just create all kinds of problems for the environment. So these are things that maybe we don't think about on a micro level, but are important to understand so that we can know what is our part and what, what can we do? Because there is a lot that we can do. So today I'm gonna to talk about five tips and probably a gazillion tricks on how to become a food waste warrior. So we're gonna start with number one. Number one is make a master plan. We've talked so many times in Sibling Living Smart about efficient meal planning, food storage rotation, how to do your grocery shopping in a, in a really meaningful way. And so I think the basic questions we need to be asking ourselves at the very beginning is, number one, what are we buying too much of? Because clearly we can see that we're buying too much food sometimes, or we get really ambitious, or something looks great and we think, oh, you know what, it's not gonna be here next week, so I'm gonna buy it. We need to imagine, you know, if something's a good deal, sometimes we find two for one, or something's really inexpensive, and so we say, well, we've gotta stock up. We'll have a plan to do that, right? Whether it's freezing some of it, or I always think if something's on sale, I wanna buy some for my neighbor and share, because it makes me feel good, and that fruit is being used up. I think of blackberries and blueberries when they're now really, really inexpensive. I love to give a box of blackberries to my neighbor. So just things like that, but don't, you know, it's never gonna be a good idea to buy it just because it's on sale, and then you end up five or six days throwing it away because you just couldn't consume it all. So we need to be mindful about that. What are the foods that we buy that are expiring sooner than we can use them? Do you ever buy something that, that's, you know, maybe for one specific recipe and before you can use it again, it's expired? So maybe some of the homework you can do is discover other ways to use that ingredient so that within that three months or six months, let's say it's a condiment of some kind, you've got that used and it doesn't go bad and you don't have to throw it out a year later, okay? And what are the foods in my pantry that need to be rotated through? And then here's another thing that we're gonna be talking about in July, of course, how to organize your pantry, but is your food visible? That's huge. I've had so many clients where I go in and revamp their kitchen or revamp their pantry, and inevitably they will have these little tiny bags with rubber bands stuffed in the back that they've completely forgot about. So something's gone rancid, or they have forgotten that they have bought it, so they've bought it again and again and again, and you can see how over time that would be wasteful as well. So another thing I like to bring up is 
are you using the foods, your staple foods, in a way where maybe they are the key ingredient in your meals? So instead of maybe starting from scratch every time you go grocery shopping and just buying all the ingredients, maybe you can consider you know, buying your food in bulk for your pantry and then starting there and saying, okay, I have these potatoes that need to be used, or I have quinoa or um, wild rice. How can I incorporate that in my meal and then go to the grocery store to just add on to what those things are? And you'll find that as you rotate your food regularly, the food not only tastes fresher, but you're going to find that you're, you just feel healthier, right? Because things that you can store that are grains and legumes and beans and things like that, they are nutritious. And if you can make those part of your daily meals, that would be, that's just a really smart idea. When you go grocery shopping, do you take inventory, just a quick inventory of what's already in your fridge or in your freezer? That's a big one. I know that I've come home several times and thought, oh, I thought that I didn't have, you know, green beans in my freezer, but it turns out they were just hiding somewhere and I had half a bag. And so then I start panicking and thinking, okay, for the next five days, we've got to eat green beans. So avoid that by, first of all, organizing your freezer and fridge, which we'll talk about in July, but also understanding that those things can be kind of an inspiration or a launching pad for your meals for the week. And it feels really good to have kind of space, empty space in your fridge and freezer because you don't feel so stressed out about having to eat it or it'll go to waste. So we need to be mindful of that. If you go to the grocery store and you had a list of things you wanted to buy and all of a sudden you say, oh, this looks so yummy. I could make this and this and this. Try to avoid buying that knowing that it's going to be there next time you come to the grocery store, right? Because you already have a plan. And if you buy too much, chances are you're not going to get to that thing and it's going to rot or it's going to go bad. So try to stick to the plan. I always like to just plan maybe four days of food for the week instead of seven days of food because I know that there's probably going to be a little bit of leftover. And so it, I love to go grocery shopping on a totally empty fridge, right? That there's basically just almond milk and condiments in my fridge. I love that because it feels like a really refresh. And um, my freezer, not so much, of course, because we store long-term things. But be mindful of what you put on your list and leave a little bit of empty space in that refrigerator. All right. I want you to be mindful next time you go to the grocery store because this happens a lot. And sometimes, you know, well, maybe you haven't thought about it because you haven't been made aware. But as we talked about before, when foods come out of the farm and they're put on these big production tables and, you know, they're sorted to be the most perfect and maybe the ones that are not so perfect. There are grocery stores who will take the not so perfect, but certainly they're still at a great standard. So for example, have you ever seen where a grocery store will red tape bananas? Well, the bananas might be perfectly good, but they're starting to just turn a little bit brown. I mean, just barely. They will probably discount that for 50%. And if it doesn't sell, they will throw them out. So being a good citizen, what we can do is we can support and say, you know what, I have use for those bananas. I can freeze them for smoothies. I can use them, um, you know, in banana bread, whatever, but just, just be kind of a, a warrior for that food that's maybe not so perfect and still so delicious. Um, I do this sometimes with apples because I have a grocer who says, you know, he knows me and I go in and usually in the fall, you can get apples in a big bushel, right? And even if I'm just picking them one by one, if I choose the ones that are not so great, I mean, they still look crunchy and great, but they have one tiny little divot you know, he's really good to say, I'm just going to give you 20 or 30 cents off per pound. Great. Do you know how many times I've made apple butter from apples that are less than perfect? It is the most delicious thing. You just take apples. You don't even have to peel them. You can put them in a pot or a pressure cooker. I add a little bit of honey if they're tart apples. And then I also do a little bit of cinnamon and ginger. Um, I think that's all I do. And then I put it on pressure with I don't even do maybe a half a cup of water because there's so much water in the apples. I'll pressure cook it for 20 minutes and it just becomes brown and mushy. And it makes the best apple butter. So it's basically applesauce without all the stuff in it. And then we use it on pancakes. I can freeze it. But if I can buy a bushel and save 10 or $15, I'll do it all the time because we love apples. And this is just a great way to use it. You could also use those apples that are less than perfect for dehydrating. They make great apple chips. Just be, uh, you know, 
support those those fruits that are they're still so good i hate it i hate waste that's one of the things i just don't like is waste so i try to think of ways to use foods that'll go bad um okay so let's talk about once you get home from the grocery store and you've had time to clean and trim and store your vegetables now there's one thing i want to bring up because this also is a great idea for our environment and many of you are probably already doing this but i just wanted to bring it up so Often, I think more often than not, we see people using those disposable plastic bags for the vegetables, right? They're really flimsy, they're really thin, but we have a whole bunch of them when we get home and we just toss them in the garbage or the recycling bin. Well, wouldn't it be better and more efficient if we just used these? These are just cotton drawstring produce bags. I've used these for years. They're so inexpensive. They're like a dollar a piece on Amazon, just buy a pack of 10 or 15. And the greatest thing about them is, you know, they're see-through enough that the cashier can see the code on the fruit or the vegetables, but they're just big enough that they fit like a head of cabbage or a bag of apples or bananas or celery. It's easy for them to see. I love that I'm not using plastic. I can throw these in the laundry once a month and they just get nice and bright and white. Another thing that these are really great for is delicates in the washing machine. So if you have those little delicates you want to wash and you don't want them combined with everything else, just use these. I also love to use these, um, you know, if, you, if you're a young mom and you have kids who have Legos or toys that need to be disinfected, like plastic toys, throw them in this, put them in the dishwasher, and you're gonna have sterilized toys that aren't gonna be all over the dishwasher. So that's a really good idea too. You may choose when you get back from the grocery store to leave things in here like cucumbers or lettuce or cabbage, things that can breathe. And great, you don't even have to transfer it. That saves you a lot of time as well. So I'm a big fan of these, these um, cotton reusable grocery bags, produce bags, because I think that they're great for the environment. And again, they're super light and I just throw them in my recycle bags. And people are always commenting when I go to the store, where did you get those? And I should be doing it too. So sometimes it's the little things that we do that kind of spur other people on to doing the same thing and being a little bit smarter about the environment. Now, I always love to encourage people when I teach them about meal planning and organization to divide the food that they get when they get home. So many of us are going to shop at Costco. Many of us are going to get these big bags of food. And it's a good idea to maybe section those out. So let's say you buy even just a tray of chicken breasts and there's six or eight breasts. You may not use all those chicken breasts in one week. So, so why not just take out the two or three that you might use and take the rest and carefully place them in the freezer? Um, in a freezer bag to make sure that they don't get that freezer burn. So there are so many times when I've gone to organize people's homes and especially refrigerators where I see stuff shoved to the back like fresh chicken or green onions or things where they used it for one meal and then they forgot about it thinking, oh, you know what, I'll use it by the end of the week. But inevitably they don't. It gets too busy, right? And so just be mindful about the portions that you're going to be using in those few days and what needs to be frozen. So we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago, I think, about pressure cooking and pre-preparing um, the foods that we're going to need. And we talked a lot about containers. Now, I'm going to be talking about containers quite a bit because this is a big organizing thing that I believe in. These are the ones I showed you last time that you can just get at Costco. They're the um, click and save. I think that's what they're called. They're glass. I love these because they can easily be frozen, microwaved. They go in the fridge and I can see exactly what's in the fridge. And when I see an array of food that looks really clean and cut and trimmed, then I want to use it, right? And it's a great way to keep things stacked. I've always been a fan of square over round. As an organizer, I know that this fits better in every single place. So um, I'm a big fan. You can buy 24 of these for like 30 bucks. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, so I'm also going to be showing you some of... Um, so those vegetables, I think, if you go back to the pressure cooking class that I talked about, I think it was two weeks ago, you'll see that we talked about how to prepare those foods ahead of time. So let's say you're going to be using rice or you're going to be using pasta or, um, you know, beans or, you know, anything. I love to take my glass containers and when I do my celery or my carrot sticks, I fill the container with water. Why? Because they stay so much more fresh and crispy. So when you have kids who want celery sticks or carrot sticks, they're already cut they can just grab them and go, and they're crispy because it's cold water. Have you ever had limpy um, celery? No, thank you. Or limpy carrots? 
not my favorite. So you can be mindful of that. This also works for radishes. Anything that should be crunchy to begin with is a good way to store it with glass in glass and some water. All right, I'm gonna show you these because these are absolutely my favorite pantry organizing um, containers. And again, these I, I, the link is in the show notes and I have all of these containers in my online store at Shopify. Um, don't go to the Simply Living Smart website. You will not find it there. I have the link in the show notes here. These are my one gallon containers and these are food grade. They're fantastic. I put all of my pastas, this is hash browns, I do cereals, um, you can do all kinds of wild rice or um, quinoa, I'm trying to think, I mean I probably have eight or ten of these in my pantry, but I love that I can see exactly what's inside, I can see how much I need. If I'm buying something in a box, which I try to avoid, I like to do things in bulk bags if I can, then I just replenish um, when these are empty, and it's great because I'm not wondering how much of a food is in a box, I know by looking at it that that needs to be replenished or used. So these are the one gallon containers. I love these as well. These are the half gallon containers. Things like couscous. I use these for things like chocolate chips, brown sugar, powdered sugar, um, nuts, seeds, um, those kinds of things. And I, I love the smaller grains in this too. So this is, these are great sizes as well. These come, I think, in um, sets of six or eight on the website. And again, free shipping on all of my containers. So if you're interested in that, know that you're not gonna have to pay a premium on the shipping, it's all included. I also love for organization these, and these are my little spice jars. These are glass spice jars. Now, one of the biggest ways that we can waste food is by buying, first of all, spices that are not fresh because they've been sitting on the, on the shelf usually for three years before you buy them. I would recommend buying your spices in bulk from reputable companies like San Francisco Herb or Pimsy Spice. And what I do is I purchase at least one pound of all of my spices because it's the best deal. And then I will divide them and put them in glass jars. Now, why glass over plastic? It makes a huge difference. In plastic, the spices, not only the, the, um, the color will leach, but also the flavor. And so you're gonna lose that in the plastic. In glass, they're always fresh and it makes it so easy. So instead of having a spice rack, I actually lay these down in my drawer um, and I have a whole, they're all you know alphabetized and I kind of like them in a savory section and a sweet section. And so that way I can find them easily. And of course they're all labeled. Um, I believe the ones I have in my shopping cart are white label or white lids instead of black. So it looks super clean and really nice. And again, if you see what's left in your container, you're much more likely to know when to replenish and not have to run to the grocery store because you've run out of something. You have a backup supply. And I always believe in having a backup supply, especially of the most favorite things you use. So these are the spice jars. All right, so we talked about these things for maybe dry ingredients. So what about the, the produce or the wet ingredients? Um, I think that, you know, one of the best things that you can do, one of the foods I think that goes bad the fastest are greens, right? Kale, lettuce, spinach, things like that. So what's the best way to store those? You can either take a, a dish towel and once you've patted those dry, roll it up and store it in the dish towel, just in the refrigerator on the shelf, no plastic. Or you can take just a, a big container, lay down a paper towel to absorb, absorb the extra moisture and then put your greens there. It's not a great idea to store your greens in plastic because they'll sweat and they'll get all mushy and that's how they go bad. One thing about greens is if you're buying a head of lettuce or spinach, sorry, and you feel like that spinach is gonna go you know, bad faster than you can use it, throw it in the freezer. Take some of it, put it in a freezer bag and use it later for smoothies. It's a great way to incorporate that. I've even used frozen spinach in soups at the very, very end and it just tastes delicious. It just tastes like fresh. Um, again, you can store them in your recycled cotton veggie bags. So that's a great way to do um, things like lettuce and cucumbers. Some foods like to be stored in water. We talked about the carrot sticks, the celery sticks, the radishes, things like that. But herbs, herbs are one of those foods that love water. And so just, you know, you come home with cut herbs or I happen to grow my own. So I grow them, stick them in a glass of water and they drink a lot of water. Um, in a day, they can drink about half a glass of water, but that's good. It keeps them fresh and crisp. So you can either put them in a glass like this and just stick them in your refrigerator, or you can actually take a moist paper towel, put your herbs on it, on the stem, don't get rid of the stem, roll it up nice and tightly, and then stick it in a plastic bag. 
I like it this way in the glass because I'm aware and I see it more often than wrapped up in a paper towel put in my produce drawer. So these are just some examples. Let's talk about berries because they're in season right now. How do you preserve your berries? Um, what I do is I come home and I take a, gla or a, a bowl, just an open bowl. I don't want to put a lid on my berries. Um, and I put a paper towel, a dry paper towel in the bowl, put the berries on top. Now, one thing that really does help to extend the shelf life of berries is just to dip them a little bit in some vinegar water, a tablespoon of vinegar, a few cups of water, give them a nice little clean, um, you know, pat them dry and then stick them in there. And that seems to help keep their shelf life, you know, almost double. So that's another tip as well for just keeping, because berries are so delicate and they can go by bad so quickly. Now, again, if you go to the grocery store and you buy a huge amount of strawberries or blueberries or blackberries, those are a great thing to freeze. That's so easy to make like a, a banana ice cream. Have you ever done that in the freezer where you take chopped frozen bananas and then add blackberries or strawberries? Unbelievable. Just put it in your you know blender, a high power blender, and it is the tastiest, yummiest dessert. And because the bananas are so sweet, you don't need any extra sugar. Top it with a little toasted coconut amazing. You'll love it. Okay, so look, one of the things that sometimes we can go off of and how to store our food when we get home is take a cue from how they do it in the grocery store, right? The only thing that I've never understood is, you know, tomatoes are never in the fridge at the grocery store. Never. They're always on the shelf, right? So tomatoes should never go in the fridge when you get home. I think we have this weird notion that they should go in the crisper and they shouldn't. They should sit on the countertop, as should avocado, as should, you know, bananas. And sit, um, the only things like citrus fruits, oranges, um, and um, lemons and limes, those should be in the fridge, apples, things like that. When you're storing things like bananas, bananas should never be close to any other fruit. So when we do a fruit basket and you see bananas and apples and oranges, and avocados, your bananas are going to go brown a lot faster if they're not separated. So I tend to put my bananas on one side of my kitchen and I put my avocados on the other side because there are gases that are emitted that make them age a lot faster and, and turn brown. Now let's talk about avocados really quick because avocados are one of those foods that you just want to have on hand all the time, but you can't possibly eat six avocados at once, right? Or within the next two days. So here are some things you can do with avocado. I typically take, I, I typically buy two avocado that are quite ripe and ready to go so that I can have those on my countertop. And then I take the more unripe avocado and I put them in my refrigerator. They can last up to two weeks in the refrigerator. And I just take them out one by one, maybe the day before I'm going to eat them. And that's enough to give them just a little bit of softness. Another thing you can do with avocado is you can actually slice the avocado once it's, it's ripe, not overripe, but ripe and then chunk it into little pieces and throw it in your freezer. This is the best thing for smoothies. You can make avocado ice cream. I mean, one of my favorite things in the whole world is avocado ice cream. So you just take avocado, it can be frozen or not, um, because it will, it will go and kind of soften up in the blender. You can take tofu or almond milk or any kind of nut milk, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of orange, and um, what else do I put in it? and a little bit of sugar or monk fruit, or sorry, honey or monk fruit, I don't use sugar. Um, and it makes the tastiest, oh, and melted chocolate. Hello, melted chocolate is, is um, the star, it's chocolate avocado mousse. And it is amazing. And you can even do it with a little bit of bitter chocolate. It, you'll die, you just have to try it. So it's a great way to use avocados. And avocados aren't the cheapest fruit, and so you wanna be able to have those and use those and not have them go to waste. Let's talk about potatoes and onions. I know I get so excited about food. It's almost crazy, but I want to, I love when food is fresh and when it's good and when it's preserved. Potatoes and onions should be nowhere near each other. They should be both in a dark and dry place. Now I've learned through experience because when I store potatoes, I store them in a basket in my pantry. Well, they start after maybe a week or 10 days to get those little, you know, those little roots that start coming out, they start wilting. But something that I found that has been real, and I think it was by accident, is to put an apple in with my potatoes and that eliminates that altogether. I don't know what it is, must be some kind of enzyme or gas that gives off, but it preserves the potatoes, so it's really great. One thing that I do with my onions, instead of throwing in a bin where it's dark and I can't see you know, what I have, 
is I actually take a nylon stocking. I do a fishnet because it's easy, um, but you can take a stocking and you can tie it in knots about five inches apart so that between knots there's about this much room. And then you cut a little tiny slit and you stick your onions in there. So I have about six or seven onions kind of hanging in this, you know, stocking in my um, pantry. They will never go rotten. I never had one go rotten because they're not touching one another and they get air and they get circulation. So sometimes that's the issue with onions is that they start to rot because there's just, they're piled on top of another. So there's just some crazy science about, you know, storing vegetables, but this has worked and these are the tips that I want to share with you. We talked about avocados and bananas and mangoes being separate from each other. So remember that because they all are kind of one of those fruits that give off gases that the other fruits don't like very much. I would encourage you also, if you have the choice, to buy your grains and nuts and seeds in bulk. Not only does that reduce cardboard and plastic waste, you can take these, you know, great little cotton mesh bags and you can weigh it yourself and you can, I mean, think of all the plastic that's wasted just by bulk food. We think bulk food's such a great idea, and it is, but we're still using plastic bags. So let's use these cotton disposable bags. Um, and the nice thing is you can replenish your supply and you have no waste. So it's really great. Um, all right, let's go on. So now you've bought your food, you've cleaned it and put it away, you've transferred all of your bulk to your containers, um, and so that they're visible, and now we're set up for the next thing. So we talked about briefly, how can we prepare ahead of time for our meals? One of the things that I think is really smart is we're all gonna cook sometimes too much, right? I mean, it's just human nature, or we have people over and there's too much food to, to um, eat, you know, for the next few days. So let's pretend that you have, you know, you have a meal plan for the week, and two of those days you're gonna be having rice or quinoa. Well, it would be a good idea to just cook that one time, right? Instead of cooking it fresh every time. And if you cook a double batch, you can easily put some of that rice in freezer bags or the quinoa in freezer bags, and it will taste just as delicious and just as fresh the second time around. But then you're not, you know, having to um, cook it again or make the mess again. And so I really love this idea. And just stack them so that they're nice and flat, and you have a really quick meal or side dish. So. I would recommend that. We talked about cooking grains ahead of time. Um, also, if you're doing meats, you can pre-cook your meats so that they're all in those glass containers ready to go. Um, dressings, we talked about that in the pressure cooker class as well. So I would just refer back to that class if you're curious about more of that. Roasting vegetables ahead of time is great. How many times do we come home from the grocery store and we have all these vegetables and we just throw them in the fridge and we just say, you know what, I'm gonna deal with that later. Well. The thing about that is we typically don't deal with that later because we just feel like it's such a hassle. Where if you can just maybe take a half an hour or 45 minutes once you're done grocery shopping and deal with those foods that you're gonna eat and freeze the rest or manage your supply, you're gonna be so much happier and it's gonna make you wanna eat those foods instead of sabotaging yourself and saying, you know what, I'm just gonna go out to eat. So there, there's a little tip as well. Um, Number two, can you believe that was only number one? Okay, number, the, the other ones are gonna be a little shorter, I promise. Number two is great, get creative and learn how to repurpose your food. So let's say that the week has got derailed, you kind of got off that meal wagon and it's bound to happen to everybody. So there are things that are gonna be maybe wilting or going bad, so let's talk about those things. The first thing I wanna talk about is greens. So lettuce, kale, spinach. How often have you gone into your fridge to use those things and they're just a little wilted? They're not bad, they're just wilted and they're not crunchy. One thing that you can do, and I have found this is really an easy thing, is just to fill a bowl with water and ice cubes. Then take the leaves off, take, separate them, stick them in and let them sit there for maybe five minutes and they will absolutely crisp up and it's almost like they have a new life. So that's a great thing to do with greens. Let's say, because this is one of my pet peeves, when I've done organization for people in their homes and I find green onions, why is it that everybody has green onion bundles somewhere under something else and they've all kind of sprawled out and gotten white and it's just, you know, it's so sad for the darn green onions because usually we only need half of that for a recipe, right? So what do we do with the rest? Well, what I would recommend is once you're done using that half, stick them in water. Water will keep them fresh longer, just like our herbs. 
And if they've wilted just a little bit, a really easy thing to do is to take them along with maybe some of your wilted greens and you can saute those in oil, a little bit of avocado oil or coconut oil. And they're great. Just top it with, um, I, one of my favorite things to do with, with greens is my wilted greens um, toasted in coconut oil with a little bit of sesame or hemp seed. And then I add some sun-dried tomatoes and maybe even some mushrooms, if I have mushrooms. It is so yummy over pasta, like an angel hair pasta. And then either top it with Parmesan cheese or nutritional yeast or whatever. It's delicious. I mean, when we can think outside the box and think, you know what, I'm not going to throw that away. It is still useful and it still has some nutrition. Then challenge yourself to do that. Let's talk about tomatoes. Now, tomatoes are really delicate, right? They're either really fresh for sandwiches and salads, or they've kind of lost their crunch, but they're still good. So what can we do with tomatoes? Well, a really easy thing to do is just to throw them in your blender and puree them. You can add a little bit of garlic and a little bit of salt, and that will make a really good sauce, right? And you can freeze that sauce. Just put it in the freezer bag and throw it in until you need a, a tomato sauce. That's an easy thing. You can also do, you know, a tomato soup, or you can do stewed tomatoes, or there's so many things that you can do with softer tomatoes, just don't throw them out. There's still a lot of vitamins and nutrition. Okay, let's talk about berries, my favorite thing in the whole world. Berries, what can we do? If they're starting to turn a little bit and you really don't want to eat them fresh, what you can do is, for example, a berry jam. Have you ever made berry jam with chia seed? Now, most of us, when we're doing freezer jam, we're using gelatin, right? I'm not a fan of gelatin. Um, I think it has stuff I don't want in my body, but what I do love is using chia instead. So I'll put a bunch of berries, and even, you know, you can even put the fresher berries and then those that are kind of going bad because they get really, really small. Put them in a saucepan with just a tiny bit of water, add a tablespoon or two of chia seed, and it will thicken up and be the most beautiful consistency. You will see a couple of speckles of the chia, but it's really not, it almost looks like the strawberry seeds themselves. Just bring it to a boil. You can even add a tablespoon of honey or monk fruit if you want, and then just use that as your freezer jam. It's delicious. Or you can even make a compote out of the berries for pancakes. So again, I mean, the, the easiest thing is just to freeze them and use them in smoothies. But if you want a little bit of variety, that might be some for you. Same thing with bananas. I mean, bananas are so easy to use when they're going bad, right? Um, you can do banana bread or banana muffins, or you can freeze them and use them for, you know, ice cream. There's just so many things. That's an easy one. Zucchini. Right now, we are in the midst of zucchini season, so you're going to get a lot of zucchini. And I hate to waste zucchini. So what I do, I've actually bought a zoodler, and probably a lot of you know what a zoodler is. It's kind of like a food processor where you have a wheel and you crank it, and here comes the zucchini, and it turns into these nice little noodles, zoodle noodles, zucchini noodles. It's delicious, great way to eat gluten-free pasta, and again, really good with your tomato sauce. So make those. They actually freeze quite well because you're not, I take the seeds out for, I try to take the seeds out if I'm like chopping zucchini, but if I'm zoodling them, they'll have a few seeds, but they do great, and you can use that Again, um, if you shred the zucchini, you can use that later in zucchini bread or other zucchini recipes. Um, but I happen to love the zoodler. And it's amazing, again, when you cook zoodles or zucchini noodles and a little bit of coconut oil, add your sauce. I mean, they'll shrink quite a bit. So you can you know, feed a whole family on one zucchini and it's delicious. So try that. We talked about avocado mousse. Herb butter is another one. I'm going to share this again. I love herb butter. Let's say your basil or your parsley is going a little wilty and you don't want to get rid of it. Um, or especially if you're planting a lot of herbs this summer, just get some softened butter. I do two sticks of softened butter, not melted, um, just softened. And then with my hands or just even in a food processor, I'll just um, put in some basil or parsley, a little bit of lemon pepper, and I'll stick this in the freezer and I will just cut off pieces. It's really easy to cut. Um, for toast or, um, you know, any sautéing I do or, or whatever for vegetables. So it's really, really yummy. Great way to use herbs. Are you guys getting excited? There's so many ways that we cannot waste food. Here's another little tip. Now, I did not know this. Um, and for those of you who are dog lovers and looking for a, um, a way for your dog to have canine calcium powder. Now, a lot of, I've never experienced this with my dog, but dogs that have, for example, diarrhea or just really hard intestinal problems, a lot of people will buy canine calcium powder, um, but it's something absolutely you can do yourself. So listen to this crazy trick. 
you can take eggshells that you're throwing away, away anyway, make sure to keep that membrane that's inside. You know what I'm talking about? It kind of is really thin. So take those eggshells, throw them in your food processor until they're really, really um, like a fine powder. You can store this in your fridge, but it's actually really good for animals, especially dogs, to have this canine powder because it has calcium in it. If your dog has no digestive issues, you can just do maybe a teaspoon or two a day in their food. But if they do, you can ramp that up to maybe three tablespoons in their food a day. And not only have you helped your animal, your pet, your human, <laughs> your human love, but you've also, um, you've also saved that waste. And eggs actually do really well, eggshells in compost, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So there's just a really random um, tip for you. So pureeing. Let's talk about things like peppers. Peppers are so good, but you know when they're just starting to get a little, little soft and you're like, oh, I forgot, it's kind of wilty, it has wrinkles, what are you gonna do with it? This is a great way to do like puree. So you can take those peppers, get the seeds out, throw them in your blender. In fact, you can even roast them before you throw them in your blender. And then you can add a can of garbanzo beans and a little garlic, oh my. A little bit of avocado or olive oil, it makes the best red pepper hummus. Super, super yummy. Any vegetable is great roasted. So whether that's red peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, you know how cauliflower gets that little brown tint on top? Just scrape it off and throw it in the roasting pan with a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. And tarragon, that's my favorite thing. And you've got these great roasted vegetables. And roasted vegetables can stay in your fridge for three, four days and just be great. So that does extend the life as well. Another thing that you can do with vegetables is to pickle vegetables. So whether that's cucumber, cabbage, um, jicama, radishes, you can just put them in a glass of water in a, in a nice airtight jar, add a little bit of salt um, or a little bit of vinegar, and they will just pickle and be delicious. And pickling is really good for your body. So it gives you those prebiotic, probiotics, prebiotics that you need. So um, it's, it's good for your gut. So we've talked about sauteing foods, we've talked about pureeing, roasting, pickling. Holly asked, what blender do I like? I have the, um, is it the K-Tech? I think I have a K-Tech. Um, but I also am a fan of the, um, what is that other one that's so popular? Um, oh, it'll come to me. I don't remember. There's two that I love, love, love. The K-Tech is one. Um, no, it's not the K-Tech. Oh my goodness, I've totally drawn a blank. I can show it to you. It's, um, you can get them at Costco. They're amazing and they're always having sales on them. They're about $300, but totally worth the money. They're great um, because they just have a really high blade. And so that's good. Um, I'll think about it and then I'll get back to you, Holly. All right, let's talk about, now that we've talked about all those methods of preserving food, let's talk about freezing. We touched a little bit about the, on this in another class, but I wanna bring it up again. Listen to this statistic. Most families waste $200 a month on food. Isn't that remarkable? $200 a month. So you consider, you know, some of your favorite clothes that you have or a favorite bag you have or favorite shoes. You wouldn't intentionally throw those away, right? Then why are we throwing away so much food? Why aren't we more intentional and thoughtful about that? Well, here are some more tips on how to become a little bit more friendly with your food. Um, Let's talk about milk um, or dairy products like that. So some of you buy gallons of milk, you have children at home. Um, when I had a lot of my, when I had my little boys at home, there were four of them, we used to go through six gallons of milk a week. It was crazy, we drank so much milk. Now we only have one son at home and he goes through maybe a half a gallon in a month, not very much milk. But if you're in the category where you're buying a lot of milk and it's, it's really affordable for you to just buy two at once like at Costco, then buy the two at once and freeze one. It does not alter the nutritional factor of your milk in any way. But if you have room in your freezer to put it, just throw, in, throw it in there. I think one of the most annoying things as a mother is being out of milk when your kid wants cereal. And they're like, oh. And all I have to do is just go to the store for that one gallon of milk. Well, you can avoid that by just freezing milk. So buy the milk double, whatever that portion is. Freeze one so you always have a backup but always remember to take it out the day before because it takes a long time for milk to thaw. I'm taking like, like eight hours, right? So stick it on your counter and it's delicious and it extends the shelf life. So milk is a good one. Citrus fruits like lemons, limes, oranges. Remember when we talked about using a ice cube tray, something as simple as this, 
So I love to buy my limes and lemons in bulk. And so I juice them and I get all the peel off, stick them in here, and I have these perfect little, one of these little cubes is about a tablespoon of lemon and zest. And so if I'm making a recipe, I can just pull it out and stick it in the microwave to melt it and use it in my recipe. So it's delicious and it tastes just like fresh. Now, again, we mentioned freezing avocado, freezing bananas, berries, all of that. So make your freezer your friend. It's so nice to have convenient things. We also talked about, you know, how often do you open a can of, let's say, tomato paste. You only need a tablespoon, but there's four or five tablespoons in the can. So what do you do? You stick them in this ice cube tray as well. And next time you have just the perfect little bundle that you can throw in your saute pan or whatever you need. So I love these little ice cube trays. Okay, how many of you, I'm one of those people that's, again, I don't like food waste, and so I want to use every scrap that I can. But when I get back from the grocery store and I'm trimming off my celery, I do not like to eat the inside that's full of leaves. It does not taste good to me, and nobody likes the leaves. I don't like to, you know, when I'm cutting off carrot tops, or if there's any leaf on a vegetable, or, you know, onions, you're always cutting off the end of the onion. What I found has been really helpful, and I know this look, doesn't look very good, but I keep a bag in my freezer and I throw all my celery tops, my onion ends, my carrots, all of the stuff that's still good in nutrition and I'll stick them in a bag. When the bag is full, I'll make a broth. So whether that's in, with chicken and making a chicken broth or whether that's just a vegetable broth, it makes a great broth. I just add garlic, even a, a whole fresh onion, any spices you want, a little salt and pepper, and this is perfect for vegetable broth. So no need to throw it in the garbage, no need to you know, feel bad because you're not composting it. You can put it in your freezer and it's great. So I would recommend that for sure. One of my favorite things to make uh, with my broth is my chicken quinoa soup. And this is a six minute pressure cooker recipe. All you do is you take the broth, maybe four or five cups, you put in, um, you can add in vegetables later, but I just like the broth. I put in about um, half a cup of quinoa, maybe a half a cup of noodles, egg noodles, and then I add some cooked chicken and garlic and salt and pepper. I put that on pressure for six minutes in my pressure cooker and I have the most delicious chicken noodle soup. Um, if you want, you can add celery and carrot. I don't, I just like the broth. And it's so yummy and so nourishing and it's just an easy thing to do. So if someone's not feeling well, um, it's, it's, a, it's a must have. Let's talk about things like baked goods. So there are those of you who make your bread, there are those of you who buy your bread, or let's talk about maybe English muffins or things like that. Let's start at the top. So when you're doing bread, you may have a family who goes through a loaf of bread in two days, and that's great. And you may have, you know, a four bread recipe. Of course, when I make bread, I do four loaves at a time and I freeze them all. But what I do do is I slice them in slices before I freeze it. Now, if you are just a couple, if there's just two of you or just one of you, and you love bread, but you just can't eat it fast enough, just take your sliced bread, put it in the freezer, and then when you need one slice of bread, pull it out and throw it in the toaster, and it's just like fresh. It is remarkable, and you're not wasting bread, and you have your supply, and you don't have to feel like you have to eat bread every day. Um, same thing with muffins. Like, I have a son who loves Costco muffins. I don't know. I'm just totally trying to wean him off that train. But um, they're huge. I mean, they're big enough for four people, right? So again, you could cut them in half or in quarters, and then stick them in a, in a um, freezer bag, and then just take one little one. I will say that one of my naughty indulgences is a quarter of a chocolate Costco muffin in vanilla ice cream with frozen cherries and chocolate chips. That's my naughty, and I love it, and so I kind of like to have them on hand as well, but we just can't possibly eat six muffins in a week. So for us, it's more like two or three months. All right, or if you're baking muffins yourself, you know, I like to kind of make the baby muffins, the mini muffins, because those are just a great bite size, and the thing I love about that is if I make a double batch, I can just take out six or seven or eight, put them on a tray on the counter, and then when people are coming over or we just need a snack, they're already done and I don't have to make the mess over and over again. Um, and so that's, that's a great way to do it too. All right, another thing that I have found really helpful, and I had a college student who um, was kind of always on the go and he would want to have fresh or really healthy food, but he didn't want to have to make it every day. So what he did was he purchased these little meal containers. And these are so smart, I love these, because they're really easy, they come in little sections. And whether you have leftovers from a meal, or you're, let's say, leaving town, and you know, you've know you got kids at home, and you wanna make sure they're eating right. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios. 
if you're taking this to work. I don't know how many people are back to work in the office, but it might be a good idea to consider, you know, having something that's, that's really easy to grab that you can have. It can be salad, it can be, you know, nuts and fruit, whatever you want. Um, if you microwave, it can be put in the microwave, but um, not in the dishwasher. So these are very, very convenient. And I love it because when things look presentable and they look fun to eat, people are more likely to eat them. And so it's nice and it's also good for portion control. So that's another idea that I, that I love. All right, number four. We're getting close to the end, my friends. Number four is understand your sell-by dates. So if you're buying food at the grocery store and you're wondering, well, how long will this last? There are three dates that you should be mindful of. The first one is the sell-by date. What does that mean? Sell-by date means that the food should be removed from the store shelves. That's it. They have a standard. They want to sell it or it's gone. Again, wasted. Okay. Um, there's another one that's called best if used by. And this just says that this will, by this date, it will have the optimum flavor. Okay. And then the last one is the use by. And this means it guarantees that the quality of the food will be the best by that date. Now, just because there are those labels does not mean that you have to abide by them. And let me tell you why. I, I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't be careful, but they have a way bigger window than they really need to have. Canned foods, for example, I have found last at least a year, if not 18 months beyond their use by date. I know because I've used them myself and they're perfectly fine and nobody's gotten sick. So canned foods you can use over a year or a year and a half. Milk, again, should be frozen. Um, if you can't use it, I would not get, I would not consume milk after its expiration date, but if it may be two to four days before it expires, if you feel like you still have a gallon, a half a gallon left over and you can't use it, another thing that you could do in order to use that milk up is you can add a little bit of vinegar um, or a little bit of lemon juice, and this makes it buttermilk, homemade buttermilk, and it'll thicken and curdle, and it makes the most amazing fluffy buttermilk pancakes, English muffins, all kinds of things like that. You can even make the batter and put the batter in your fridge and then un you know, unfreeze the batter. So just little tips like that so you don't have to throw it down the sink. You've already paid the money and it's still fine to eat. Um, I would just think of ideas like that. Eggs. Eggs are one of those food that can last a lot longer than they say they can. In fact, you know, if you're buying um, the natural eggs, um, they, can let, they can sit on your countertop. They do, do not have to be refrigerated. Um, there are some, I'm not going to say a clean sweet, but there are some that can just sit on your frit, on your counter for two weeks. So look into that. I don't want to tell you something that's not right. But most eggs that we buy that are in the store anyway, those can go well a week or two beyond their expiration date. Okay? So you can be mindful of that. Um, what I like to do if I feel like the eggs are not going to be, you know, I can't use all those eggs. I mean, usually, you know, my son and my husband eat a lot of eggs. Um, you can do like a like little mini quiches or little mini um, you know egg tarts or whatever, and you can throw them in with some vegetables and put them in a muffin liner, bake them, and then throw them in a plastic bag in your freezer, and then just um, you know warm them up and eat them. So it's just like having a fresh omelet. If you're not sure about expiration dates or these dates, download the Food Keeper app, and that will help you understand what is safe to eat and what is what you need to get rid of. So. Um, let's talk about other foods like cheese. Now we've all bought, I like to buy cheese on the block because I know that it's not, you know, mixed with potato starch and all this other stuff and I'll grate it myself. But sometimes those blocks get kind of crusty on the end, right? And they might even get a little bit of that white fuzzy mold. But I know that cheese lasts forever. I mean, it's supposed to, right? But it's just the outer portion that's not so uh, favorable. So you can just cut that off, make sure to use a clean knife and then get rid of that knife. And you can either shred that cheese and put it right in the freezer for another, another time, um, or you can do something else right at the moment. But I find that that's the easiest way to save the cheese, just cut off the out. This is the same thing for cream cheese. Now, cream cheese is a little tricky. It can get pink or green, and you do not, when it starts turning a color like that, it's too late. But if it has just a tiny little bit, I've noticed, of just like, it's almost like gray fuzz, you can cut that off. It's perfectly fine inside smell it. And if it smells clean and it smells good, it's probably good. What I love to do with cream cheese that might be turning a little bit um, is that I just make a, a quick icing. Like I just do cream cheese and butter and some um, lemon zest 
and I'll make the icing in my food processor and I'll stick it in my freezer so that when I go to make a cake or a dessert or something, I have that ready to go. And that thaws really quickly. So again, I don't have to throw away that cream cheese. Um, bread. Let's talk about bread. We talked about slicing it, but what if it's to that point where it's actually getting stale? Well, it makes great bread crumbs, right? As long as it's not moldy, you can throw it in your, in your um, food processor or your blender and Oh, Holly, it was Blendtec, not Ktec. <laughs> I just remembered the blender. It's Blendtec. Um, anyway, you can take those, the bread and throw it in your blender with some seasonings and a little bit of garlic salt or onion salt and make breadcrumbs. And then take those breadcrumbs and throw them in your freezer, in a freezer bag. And those are great. Those are even good on like pasta or a salad or whatever you want. Or, um, you know, you can do even croutons. Um, what I like to do when I make croutons is take my bread, cut it in squares. Well, first before I, I roast it or I broil it. I do um, some garlic butter and then I stick it in there and it makes yummy, yummy croutons. It's really good for um, like a, a Parmesan salad. So there's an idea. The last one I want to talk about is composting and I am not a composter myself, so I'm not going to pretend that I am, but I have a neighbor who has this beautiful garden and he always shares his produce with us. And I recently asked, would it be okay if I shared my compost? So I will take all of my scraps and vegetables and everything or um, melon rinds and I will give it to him and he will compost it and he's more than happy because then he doesn't have to buy compost. Um, we also trade, you know, bread for vegetables. So that's really nice. If you have somebody that you know who can use those scraps for composting, I would encourage you to ask because they're always going to be grateful. Again, eliminating the greenhouse waste is really going to help us to leave a smaller imprint, um, a footprint on the environment. So that's always good. All right, friends, I hope that something that I've said has been a takeaway for you and that you've learned something that maybe you didn't know and that you might want to share with somebody that you love. Because I feel like if we make small habits of doing good things and it's just sometimes just tweaking the things we're already doing but making it better, we can really, um, you know, we can save money, we can be kinder to the planet, and we can teach people things. And it's always a good idea to be a good steward of our environment and our planet. All right, just another reminder for those of you who want to watch past episodes, they are all there under Simply Living Smart in Facebook, under the video tab or the live tab. There are free downloads for you to enjoy, and I hope you take advantage of that. Also, I've put a link in the show notes for all of the containers we talked about today, so if you're interested in those, remember, free shipping on every container, and they come in sets, so you have plenty to work with. Next week... I want to tell you that we're going to be talking about how to create a mini medical binder. Now, a lot of people that I've talked to through this coronavirus um, have said things about, you know, accessibility of medical files, or a lot of people get dropped off at the hospital and they can't be with their loved ones, and then there's all this miscommunication. Well, next week we're going to talk about how to avoid that and what you can do ahead of time to prepare and to organize all of your medical information in a mini binder that you can have accessible so that if one of your family members has to go to the emergency room or if you have to go yourself, that you have in your hand all of the information that you need to submit so that you can get your care faster and more efficiently. And it will also be a free download so you can get started right away. And I think this is going to help give you a little bit more peace of mind. We don't know where this coronavirus is going to go, if it's going to resurface again or if it's going to be something else that we have an emergency around. And we all know that when we're stressed in our lives, that we're less functional. So if we can have these things taken care of, it just helps things go more smoothly. Again, in July, I hope you look forward to this. This is all going to be dedicated to organization. All of your, all of your spaces and places, all of your paperwork, your car, your garage, your purse, we're going to cover it all. And if there's anything specifically that you would like me to cover or you have questions about, Feel free to leave a message here, and I will be happy to answer it in the live episode. All right, friends, again, so great to have you with me. I am so thankful that you share these um, videos with those that you love, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care until next Saturday. Bye-bye.